Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to uh, talk about the uh, legislative branch at the s local, state, and national level. Um, first off, uh, I was told by one of my students I was really loud. I don't believe this, so I'm going to try to be a lot quieter today. And uh, I appreciate your behavior. I, I don't tell you this often, but your behavior when, when I've had a sub the last couple times, I've uh, gotten really good notes from the substitute. So uh, just to thank you for that. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about the Fairfax County Government Legislative Branch. Um, any power given to the uh, Fairfax County is given to them through the uh, Virginia General Assembly. Um, the powers they are given have to be essential. They can't just be convenient. Um, so uh, there's lots of things that Fairfax County would do that the General Assembly does not give it the power to do. Um, even things like uh, increasing taxes, we have to get the okay from the General Assembly. Uh, that's called the Dillon Rule. Uh, that you'll learn more about that when you're in high school, so I don't want to clutter your heads with too much. All right, so we have a Board of Supervisors. Uh, what they do is they establish county government policy. Uh, they pass resolutions and ordinances, um, again, within the limits of their authority. Um, they can approve the budget. They can set the tax rate. They approve land use, uh, like for example, like you can't run a McDonald's out of your house. Um, your, where you live is zoned for residential. Um, and they make appointments, uh, meaning they appoint people to different positions like the county executive that we talked about yesterday. Um, let's go over to Google here. Here is the Board of Supervisors website. Uh, if you're looking here, you can see all the different things. These different services are online. And I just pointed to my computer. Um, <laughs> and different meetings when they meet. You can attend their meetings and stuff. And uh, the chairwoman, her name is Sharon Bulova. Her name is right over here. And there is a picture of Sharon. All right. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. I probably should not have exited out of it. And I'm not gonna open this chart for you. We'll talk about it in class, but it just says how our county government is uh, organized. All right, let's talk about the legislative branch. Of Virginia it is bicameral hopefully by now you know bicameral means two chambers the House of Delegates in the Virginia Senate and they meet annually for a fixed number of days um, this year they'll meet for 30 days next year they'll meet for 60 days so there's 30 60 30 60 um, we have a part-time legislator our legislators are not full-time they most the majority of them have uh, other jobs that they go to they live in the communities that they uh, represent um, Lawmaking process in Virginia, it's very similar to the lawmaking process in the United States. The major difference is um, bills are, no, let's go over it for a second. The bills are proposed, uh, then they're discussed in committees, they're debated on the floor, voted on by both houses, and they're signed in the uh, law by the governor. The governor can either sign them or he can veto them. Some issues they work with, uh, some primary issues, education, public health, environment, state budget we have a biennial budget so uh, budgets passed every two years and then the levying and collecting of taxes all right so that is the uh, legislative branch state level national level of course it's called Congress uh, we have the uh, House of Representatives and we oops sorry and we have the Senate uh, you'll see this chart here again we'll talk more about this chart when you come in the class um, House of Representatives is much larger their terms are only two years as compared to six years. Uh, representatives represent a part of the state, whereas the uh, members of the Senate, rep there's two senators, they represent the entire state. But again, we'll talk more about this chart when you come into class. Uh, you'll notice the lawmaking process uh, is very similar at the state level, I'm sorry, at the national level, it is the state level. Major difference being that the bill is signed into law by the president. Um, and then, you know, why do we have laws? Uh, what influences are on the lawmaking process? Uh, they write laws, take action, response to problems or issues. Um, uh, something that's going on right now, a lot of people, some, no, 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 no let me come back. Some people believe that we have, when it comes to gun ownership, we need to change uh, some of the laws, rules, and regulations we have. Some people don't. Uh, but that's something that's being talked about right now in our. Uh, both in our uh, national and our state uh, senates and uh, legislative branches. Um, individuals and interest group help shape legislation. 
And as we talked about, uh, the, uh, the laws that Congress actually can pass are limited by the Constitution. Uh, and that's all I have for today. Um, questions, ask them in class, and uh, we will uh, see you uh, tomorrow and Friday. Or no, Friday and Monday. Have a good day.